Good morning, and welcome to Onlock's nonpartisan webinar to learn about the 2020 election. My name is Katherine Kelly, and I'm the Senior Government Affairs Manager with Onlock. Before we get started, I want to mention a few items about the presentation today. We will be recording the first part of the webinar so we can share the important information with people who could not participate live. After the presentation, we will stop the recording and have time for questions, which can be submitted through the chat box. COVID-19 has changed many things in our lives, including how we will be participating in the 2020 election. This year, everyone who is a registered voter in California will receive a vote by mail ballot, regardless of how you may have voted in the past. We hope this webinar will provide you with helpful information to make sure your vote counts in the 2020 election. Today, we will hear from Adria Orr, the Senior Project Coordinator for Voting Rights and Census from Asian Americans Advancing Justice. She will present a nonpartisan educational overview about how voting will be different this year, how to register to vote, and we will leave plenty of time to have your questions answered. Thank you for joining us today, and I will hand it over to Adria for the presentation. All Asian immigrants didn't get that right until 1952. This is very significant to me personally when I learned this um, because my parents were born in 1951 and they came to this country in the 70s. So that means that their right to vote and a lot of other people's right to vote is only one lifetime old. Uh, I will also want to point out the last, uh, the next point, which is 1965 and the Voting Rights Act. While African Americans had the right to vote on paper uh, for a long time before this, many, many years, it was extremely difficult or actually impossible for them to actually vote because of violence and, and racist laws in many states and cities. In some counties, actually only one to 2% of African Americans were registered to vote, not because they didn't want to, but because those in power were so effective at blocking their rights. So it wasn't until 1965 when the Federal Voting Rights Act was passed and those local laws were banned that this actually changed significantly. I share this because, you know, it's an important part of American history, but also because the Federal Voting Rights Act was then expanded in 1975 under the leadership of a Black Congresswoman from Texas, Barbara Jordan. She insisted that English only elections were similar to some of the tactics that were used historically to block black people from voting in many places. So thanks to her fighting to include people who primarily speak a non-English language within the Voting Rights Act, many communities now have the right to translated ballots and other elections materials, which we'll talk about more. So it took 200 years to truly secure the right to vote for people of color. We've only really had that right for about 55 out of 244 years. And in many ways, that fight is still going on. I know sometimes voting can seem like a hassle. Ballots in California are so long <laughs> and it takes um, a lot to understand everything on it and who's on it. But we should always remember that we have the right to do this because of many, many determined people. People fought and in some cases died so that we could all have the right to vote. Uh, but unfortunately, a lot of people in our communities aren't using that right. So we can all do something about that. If you look at the, this is information from the 2016 general election, which was the last time we had a presidential election. You can see that uh, Asian American voters in California and Latino voters in California voted at much lower rates than everybody else. What kind of impact does this have? That means that politicians feel like they can ignore our communities because we don't stand up and assert ourselves. They don't hear our voices. So all of us are gonna do something about that this election and vote. So now we're gonna talk a little bit about what you need to do to make sure you're able to vote. The first step is registering. So, to register to vote, there are a few qualifications. You have to be a US citizen. Uh, you have to be a resident of California. If you wanna vote in California, you must be over 18 on election day. Um, 
not currently in prison or on parole for the conviction of a felony and not found to, by a court to be mentally incompetent. It's also good to know in California that if you are 16 or 17, you can pre-register to vote. So if you have young people in your lives, it's a good reminder for them. Uh, they can actually sign up so that once they turn 18, they will be registered. For anybody who lives in San Francisco, you can actually vote also, um, if you know people who are non-citizens, uh, they can actually vote in the school board election if they fill certain requirements. So um, that's something that you can learn about more. Uh, so you must register to vote before you can vote. You, um, our, our elections are run by uh, county-based elections offices. So each county has their own office and they need information from the voters so that they can send out information about the election, including where and how to vote. So once you register, you actually receive a lot of this information by mail. Um, the deadline to register to vote, uh, sometimes say it's October 19th, which is true if you wanna register in time to sort of make sure you get all of those additional materials. But if you miss that deadline and you don't register by October 19th, you can still register in California. And we're gonna talk about that more later. Um, and now Catherine, I think you had a question that you wanted to pose to the group. Question is, are you registered to vote at your current address? You can look at the results of the poll at the end, I think. Oh, no, it's right here. Great. So everybody, uh, many people here say that they are registered to vote at your, their current address. A couple people maybe aren't. And so we can talk about what to do if you aren't registered at your current address. So registering is really simple. You can do it online. You can use a paper form. Um, at the, well, most of us now I think aren't going to these places, but you can do it at the DMV, at the post office, the library, the elections office. You can also call the number that's listed here, 800-345-VOTE, and get a form mailed to you at no cost. One of the things that's great in California is you also don't necessarily need to speak or read English to register to vote you can actually register online in 10 different languages. Um, so that includes uh, Spanish, Hindi, Chinese, Japanese, Khmer, Korean, Tagalog, Thai, and Vietnamese. Um, when you're registering to vote, you should also, if, if one of those languages is your preferred language, you should also indicate that on your registration form so that you can receive languages in that uh, materials in that language if they're available. And if you're not sure whether you're registered to vote, uh, you can just register again um, or check online. You can go online to this website, voterstatus.sos.ca.gov, um, and it will tell you the address and the county, all of the information uh, for your registration so that you know if you need to change it. Um, if anybody is uncertain about whether you're register, registered or if maybe you have moved or something big like a name change has happened since you registered last, you can just re-register. It never hurts to re-register re to vote if you're uncertain about anything. It will just update your information. Now I mentioned if you miss the deadline on October 19th, you can still register. So in California, we, we have what's called same day voter registration. That means that you can go in person to your voting location um, and you can actually register, fill out a form and get your ballot to vote all in one visit. Um, it is something that you can do on election day at polling places or if there's early voting some counties will have locations that are actually open before election day where, where you can do that. So there's no excuse to not be registered. So once you're all registered, 
um, there's a couple of other things that you should do to make sure that you're uh, prepared to vote. One important thing is um, to set some time aside to educate yourself. Like I said, in California, a lot of times our ballots can be really long, especially with all of our ballot propositions. Um, and so it's nice to do your research ahead of time so you know exactly how you wanna vote. You'll get a lot of information in the mail from the county, um, but there are also resources uh, like the website that's listed here, it's called Voters Edge, and it provides a nonpartisan view of sort of who and what is on the ballot and breaks it down in language that's sometimes easier to understand than the language that you might get um, in the official materials. And now I think we have another poll question. Still have folks okay. answering, so we'll give it another 10 seconds. Okay. Sounds good. <laughs> I think I, I may have ended the previous one too early. <laughs> Ooh, <okay. laughs> Great. Oh, I love to see these results. I uh, love to see that most people here do know that translated voting materials and resources are available. Yes, so we'll talk about that a little bit now. So another way to prepare is to make sure that you will get translated materials if they're available and you would like them. Um, under federal law, as, as we kind of talked about before, some counties offer fully translated materials in Chinese, Khmer, Korean, Spanish, Tagalog, and Vietnamese. Um, and again, it's just really important that if you have a preference for a non-English language, that you make sure your county elections office knows. So if they do provide translations for that language, they can make sure to send you those materials and that includes your ballot. We're gonna go over specifically what languages are supported in San Francisco, Alameda County, and Santa Clara County um, in just a little bit. So in addition to the federal law, we also have state law. That means that some communities may also be eligible to receive language assistance that's a little bit more limited. Uh, so it will not necessarily be a fully translated ballot that you vote on, um, and it might not include some of the election information materials, but some people, um, some languages will be covered um, where the county provides what's called a facsimile ballot, uh, kind of a weird words, so we call it a translated sample ballot. This is a ballot that you can use as a reference to, help to vote on an English ballot. So you don't fill it out directly, but you can use it to um, help translate what's written on the English ballot. Um, this depends on, the availability depends on where you live in your county. So if you think the language is covered in your county, you can call your county elections office to request one or ask for one um, if you're going in person to vote. So now we'll talk about the county's specific language coverage. Um, in Alameda County, if you live in Alameda County, you can uh, request translated ballots and the voter information guide. So that has all the information about the ballot measures and candidates in Chinese, Spanish, Tagalog and Vietnamese. Um, if you speak one of the other languages that's listed on the right, so Burmese, Hindi, Japanese, Khmer, Korean, Laotian, Mian, Mongolian, Punjabi, or Telugu, you can, you may be able to ask for one of those translated reference ballots to help you fill out your English ballot. Um, it depends on where in the county you live. So if you want to either request one by mail or find out if one will be available, 
uh, you can call your county elections office and the number is here, um, 510-272-6973. In San Francisco, if you speak Chinese, Spanish, or Tagalog, then you can request the fully translated ballots and the voter information guides that are, again, fully translated. Um, and if you speak Burmese, Japanese, Korean, Thai, or Vietnamese, um, then you may be able to get the translated reference ballot depending on where you live. In Santa Clara County, it's a little bit different. Uh, they actually have three categories. So for Chinese, Spanish, Tagalog, and Vietnamese, you can get the fully translated ballot as well as translated uh, information guide and materials. If you speak Korean, Khmer, Japanese, or Hindi, uh, you can get translated ballots but, that you vote on, but you uh, cannot get the other additional translated materials. And then if you speak Gujarati, Nepali, Punjabi, or Telugu, then you may be able to get the reference ballot, again, depending on where in the county you live. So basically, if you uh, want to get one, don't want to get language material sent to you in the mail, you're not sure what's available, you can always contact your county elections office and ask them. And if they have anything available, they can send it to you for free, they, at no charge. Okay, so the next piece in getting prepared is making your plan for how um, or where you're gonna go vote. The uh, information guide you receive from the county will have information about how you can vote, including the physical locations, where you should go to vote, um, and then also more information about um, mailed ballots and, and that kind of thing. Um, as Catherine mentioned at the beginning of this webinar, if you're accustomed to going in person to vote, um, you should know that your polling place might have changed or the county might have different in-person voting options than before, especially because of the pandemic. Um, so we'll go over what some of those changes are for the same three counties again. So the third step in all of this is that you're gonna go actually vote. Um, right now, there are kind of two main ways that you can cast your ballot. Um, and I'll pause here for another poll question. The question is, have you ever voted by mail in an election? Yes, no, or not sure. Awesome. So we have a good mixture of people who have voted by mail and who have not. Um, we're going to talk about both voting by mail and voting in person. So that's great. So the first way that you can vote um, is to vote by home, uh, vote from home. Uh, so more and more people are choosing to vote by mail. In fact, some counties like Santa Clara County switch to a system where you are automatically going to be mailed a ballot whether you ask for one or not. Because of the pandemic in California, this has extended to all counties. So again, as Catherine noted, um, if you're an active registered voter in California, uh, you will be mailed a ballot, which is why it's so important to make sure that the address that is on record for your voter registration file is accurate. Uh, when you vote by mail, your ballot is sent to you by the elections office um, in starting from about a month before election day, but it may arrive over the next couple of weeks. Um, and it's the same ballot as the one that voters see when they go in person and get a paper ballot. You just have to fill it out and return it. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit more about how you return it. So when you receive your ballot in the mail, you do have the option to mail it back. Um, you do not need to put additional postage on it. So you can just put it into a mailbox. Um, but you want to make sure that if you're uh, putting it into a mailbox, that it's going to be postmarked uh, by, by 8 p.m. on election day. So if it's getting kind of close to election day, then we might recommend uh, that you use one of these other options to drop off your mail ballot. So the second option for returning your mailed ballot is at a ballot drop box. Um, almost every county is providing these secure drop box locations 
where you can go and put your um, ballot envelope into the drop box and the elections office actually pick, picks those up directly. So they do not go into the mail system. Uh, the third option is that you can actually go to a polling place or a voting location where people are voting in person and you can just go and drop off your ballot. So if you filled it out, signed it, dated it, put it in your envelope, you can just drop it off. They usually have a place set up sort of near the front or someone collecting ballots. Um, the key thing, if you're using any of these three options, they are all totally valid ways to return your ballot. You want to make sure that you sign and date your ballot before mailing it in. Uh, the signature and the date are needed uh, to, to verify your ballot. So just make sure that you do that. Um, and again, you want to make sure that your address is updated for your voter registration because that's how your ballot will be mailed to you. And if you want a translated ballot, you can request one ahead of time and they'll actually mail it to you if it's available. Some of the benefits of voting from home are you can fill out your ballot whenever you want. So uh, you can take the time to sit down when you're comfortable in your own home um, and, and do it at night or uh, on the weekend. You can get help from your family and friends. So, um, you know, say that you, maybe you have some family member who helps you translate or just can help you figure out uh, exactly um, how to fill out the ballot. Um, and you can be at home, have more time to research and prepare and, and just have that flexibility. And the picture there is, is a, one of the, a picture of an envelope where you would sign it and date it. If you feel a little bit stressed about whether or not your, uh, where your ballot, when your ballot is being received, we recommend that you can sign up for this service. It's a free service that's being offered by the California Secretary of State. And you can actually receive automatic updates um, by mail or by phone uh, when your ballot is mailed to you. So you'll actually know when it's in the mail so you can know when to expect it. Um, it will alert you when your ballot is received by the county um, and when your ballot is counted by the county. And then if there's any issues of your ballot, so say they're counting it and, and they want to check your signature or, or there's something that they need to clarify with you, um, they will be flagged for you by this service and, and you can um, go ahead and follow up with the county elections office. You should know that if any issues are flagged with your ballot, the county elections office will also reach out to you, but this way you can get the real time notification if you sign up for this service. The second way to vote is to go vote in person. So this is the more traditional way of voting. You go into a polling place, uh, check in, go cast your ballot um, and do the whole thing uh, in person. Uh, by law, you actually get two hours off from work to cast your vote. So just if anybody is worried about that, you can ask your employer in advance for that time. If you're voting in person, you would go in, find the check-in table, give them your name and address. Um, and once they find you, they will give you a ballot um, and send you to a voting booth. This is a good moment um, if you uh, know that uh, ballot is available in your preferred language, make sure they're giving you the right language um, and make sure you request uh, a translated materials if they're available. I want to note that uh, sometimes people wonder about providing identification when voting. You should not be asked for identification when voting unless you just registered to vote for the first time and when you registered, you did not provide any identification information. Um, so this is pretty specific scenario. Um, and in that case, you may be asked to show ID, but you can use many things as ID. Um, in addition to a driver's license or that kind of thing, you can also use utility bills, um, many things that include your name or address. Um, I also want to note that if you're voting in person, many counties will have early voting, even if Previously, they did not. A lot of them are expanding, and we'll go over specifically what's available in San Francisco, Alameda County, and Santa Clara County. If you're voting in person, uh, you should know that you can bring up to two people to help you vote. Um, so if you need physical assistance or translation assistance, 
um, anything like that, you can bring somebody as long as they are not uh, representing your employer or union. So if you have a friend or a family member, um, they can go help you vote in person. Uh, when you're voting, you can always ask for help. Uh, many of the poll workers are there just to provide you with assistance. If you make a mistake, you can um, ask for a new ballot. So you don't have to you know, scratch it out. You can just get a whole new ballot to start over. And if you have vision difficulties, hearing difficulties, mobility impairment, any um, sort of accessibility needs, there should also be assistance available to you. Additionally, during this time of COVID-19, if you do choose to vote in person, um, you know, you should know that there are, are steps being taken to make sure that it's a safe experience. So polling places are going to be set up to allow for physical distancing. Um, they'll be limiting the number of people that can go inside to make sure that's possible. Poll workers are going to be wearing masks, their face coverings, and they will follow public health guidelines. Um, and voters are also being asked to do the same and comply with uh, public health suggestions during this time. If you run into any problems uh, while voting, for example, if you're not on the voter list, um, first talk to the poll worker. So you can ask the poll worker to check the list again. Sometimes they have supplemental lists. If they can't find your name, you can ask if you're in the wrong location, if they can help you identify the correct location. Um, don't just give up, you know, try and, and figure out what's going on. Particularly here in California, there's a lot of supports available for um, how to problem solve any issues. So if you still cannot solve a problem, don't just leave without voting. You can ask for a provisional ballot, which is a ballot that you fill out and then after uh, the election, the elections office will verify your identity or make sure you're still you're eligible to vote and then they'll count the ballot. Um, or you, you may be able to do same day registration and just re-register to correct whatever issue is happening. Um, so don't give up, make sure that you uh, are able to cast your ballot. If you do have any questions or you have additional problems that the poll worker is not able to help you with. There are also hotlines available to help you troubleshoot. Um, some of them are listed here and I'm sure that we can share this information out afterwards as well. Um, some of them are specific to particular languages. So if you feel more comfortable getting assistance um, in, in a certain language, then you can use these hotlines as a resource as well. So if you live in Alameda County, uh, as with everyone else, every voter will be mailed a ballot. There will not be polling places as there usually are. Instead, Alameda County is providing what's called accessible voting locations for people to go cast your ballot in person. Um, these will be larger locations, but there will be fewer of them throughout the county. And you should be able to go to any location to cast your ballot. So instead of going to a specific polling place, you can go to any location. They will be open starting on Saturday, October 1st, and they'll be open Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and then Tuesday, November 3rd. The locations are still being finalized, so you can check uh, with the county elections office or check for the information you're sent in the mail from the county elections office for the final locations. Additionally, there will be 66 Dropbox locations uh, which we talked about, that's one option for your ballot that you received in the mail. Um, those will be throughout the county and they'll be open starting October 6th. And th that, those locations will also be available from the county elections office. In San Francisco, again, every voter will be mailed a ballot, but in San Francisco, there will be traditional polling places. So um, the, I think almost 600 polling places that they have in San Francisco will be open. They will only be open on Tuesday, November 3rd uh, during election day from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. If you wanna go in person to vote early, there is one early voting location um, that will be open starting October 5th and it's in front of the Bill Graham Civic Auditorium um, on 99 Grove Street. So um, that's an option for early voting. And then if you live in Santa Clara County, every voter, again, will be mailed a ballot. Um, in Santa Clara County, they have 
what's called vote centers. Vote centers also are larger locations. Uh, voters can go to any vote center to cast their ballot in person. You do not need to go to a specific vote center. They will also be open for starting on Saturday, October 31st. So in Santa Clara County, you can go Saturday, Sunday, Monday, or Tuesday. Um, and there are about 100 locations that you can go to vote in person. There will also be over 75 drop box locations throughout the county starting on October 5th. Um, the locations for these are going to be available uh, through the county, either their website or the information they mail to you. Uh, they're just being finalized still. So just to recap some of the key dates. Ballots will be mailed to all registered voters starting on October 5th, but they'll continue being mailed after that. Ballot drop boxes will be open the day after that on Tuesday, October 6th. If you register by Monday, October 19th, then you will receive all of your elections materials on time for sure. If you need to register after that, it's still possible to do so using same day voter registration. The last day to vote, is Tuesday, November 3rd. The polls are open from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. And if you're in line by 8 p.m., they have to let you vote, Just stay in line. Most counties, but not all counties, will have early voting available starting on Saturday, October 31st, if that's something people are interested in. Um, I know that was a lot of material. I wanna say thank you to um, our awesome interpreters and to Catherine for helping set up this, um, this opportunity to connect with you all. If you need anything, you're welcome to reach out to me or to reach out to my colleague. Um, you can get my contact information here. It's Adria O at advancingjustice-alc.org or um, you can also reach out through Catherine. That's totally an option as well. Um, and I'm sorry, I think I probably talked a lot, which is why I'm extra grateful for the interpreters. It was a lot of words, um, but I'm happy to answer any questions that people may have.